Uh, and welcome everyone. Clearly, uh, this is a little bit different than you, but we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll take it as uh, as we can. So again, we're very thankful to have you with us today from the comfort of your own homes for the launch of our new S8 UHD Smart TV and Q8 ULED TV models. The first model to arrive in market from our new 2020 smart television range. Clearly, uh, this is not the way we had originally envisaged our launch, although it is really great to see you all as we unveil both of these exciting series today. Uh, before we get stuck into the details, the product details that is, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the gravity of the global, uh, the current global situation we're faced with. It has shaken up the way we live and work. Um, and like others, we've made some fairly significant changes to the way we operate to ensure our customers are well cared for. And while the arrival of our new products in stock is important, high quality service continues to be a key and critical priority for our business. To this end, we've worked very, very hard behind the scenes to equip our Melbourne-based Tyson's customer care team to work from home. Uh, this is an important transition as it means we can continue to provide Tyson's customers with local service support during this challenging time, whilst maintaining the health and well-being of our team. We've also been working through some important digital updates to optimize the customer experience online, including direct links through to our e-commerce partners and a live chat functionality that we'll be launching imminently. We look forward to sharing more information with you on this as appropriate. Finally, uh, Australians wanted to browse our range from the comfort of home can also use the Hisense Home AR app that we released last year. Uh, it in the Q8. We're very proud to be introducing Australians to the S8 and Q8 models as they look to enhance their at-home viewing experience, especially during this difficult time. These are the first of many exciting products that are on their way on the way this year. This is very much the tip of the iceberg and we look forward to officially unveiling the rest of our product pipeline in the coming months, including the likes of our highly anticipated ULED dual cell and our 8K offering. As always, Australian needs are our guiding light when it comes to deciding on new product offerings. And ES8 and Q8 have been created in partnership with our local research and development team to deliver on size and picture quality, two key consumer demands in the current landscape. Bringing to life our creative brand platform, Go Bigger with Hisense, I'm pleased to share that Australians who are looking to up their TV game in 2020 can opt for our massive 100 inch S8 UHD smart TV. This is the first time Hisense has offered an LCD TV of this size in any market. Not only is this exciting for us, but also for Australian consumers with retail demand for large TVs continuing, continuing to, to, uh, to grow and heighten. Hisense has raised the bar for ULED TV in 2020. Our new Q8 ULED TV offers Australians with an exceptional quantum dot TV solution that delivers immersive picture quality, ideal for those who are chasing a crisp true to life image. In a moment, I'll hand you over to our national product trainer, Chris Mayer, who will be taking us through all of the technical details of both series before we open up for a short Q&A at the end. Uh, I'm sure I'll have the opportunity to chat with each of you throughout the year. However, I'd like to take the opportunity once again to thank you all kindly for taking the time out of your day to join us, albeit virtually. We really do value our relationships with each and every one of you and look forward to working with you more throughout the year, particularly as review units become available. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, hand over to Chris to take you through each of the series. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, what is now the official High Sense Training uh, Center, aka the study of my house. Um, I actually have uh, one of the TVs available, which is fantastic. Um, so I will have the uh, We'll have a bit of a hands-on. Um, there you go, I'm spotlighting myself. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we'll have a bit of a hands-on um, with the TV um, as I show you through the Vita system uh, later on. Um, but for now, it's a bit of PowerPoints and a bit of talking. Um, I just wanted to mirror my thanks as well. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I know this is not the way we usually do this. There's uh, significantly less alcohol and uh, handshakes, but uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll work through it. All right, so let me just share my screen. Um, if you can't see the screen, type in the chat. Um, 
and just let us know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we should all be good to go. Cool, here we go. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, welcome again. Uh, we're going to start by talking about the UHD TV, so the S8 series. Um, as Andre mentioned, um, customers are going bigger with their TVs. That's a trend that we've been seeing for the last few years. Um, we wanted to go really big and bring um, quite a lot of offerings to our customers. So this is our most diverse range, um, starting from a 43 inch all the way up to um, that 100 inch TV, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so we're, we're very excited to see that. I'm quite excited to see that in person as well. I'm gonna get the opportunity. Cool. So let's uh, let's go through and talk about some of the features um, that we're bringing to the TV this year. And as I said, when we talk about the software, we'll, we'll do that later on and I'll, I'll try and show you a bit of a hands-on. I've got a camera set up and it uh, should be pretty cool. Okay, so uh, this is our entry into the UHD range, um, but that doesn't mean that it's just a basic TV. Um, so we still use a standard blue backlight um, as most TVs do at this price point, uh, but we actually have our own color filter system um, called Precision Color. So you might have seen Precision Color in the specs before, but not really known what that is. Um, so basically that allows us to actually up the color ratio of your reds and your greens. Um, blue is naturally going to be fantastic um, in this TV because of the backlight, uh, but this allows us to get those other colors um, and to give us that, that full billion color range um, that you're looking to see in Netflix, Amazon, and those streaming surfaces um, that are coming through. So yeah, very important feature. Um, that's that's been on our TVs for a few years now, and we're, we're happy to continue that um, with our UHD range. Cool, and high dynamic range, super important. Um, right now, I think most people have switched to streaming services. Uh, I would ask you to raise your hand, but I can't actually see all of you, but I assume that all of you are using uh, streaming services these days. So realistically, um, HDR becomes very important. Um, we've noticed that customers noticed HDR more than they noticed 4K when it was introduced. So this gives you that really rich darkness on the screen, that really rich brightness on the screen uh, simultaneously. And so this TV supports HDR10. Um, it supports hybrid log gamma um, as well. So the advanced HDR10 uh, range, um, and that's gonna be compatible with all of your streaming services. Cool. Um, now, ultra dimming, so basically this is actually a software system. Um, so what we've done with our TVs this year is rather than just have a hardware layer uh, to handle the dimming, so just that one dimming zone or however many dimming zones we have in the background, we now have a software layer on top of that as well. And so basically what that does is it's an algorithm that cuts up the screen into tiny little cubes, um, thousands of cubes. And in each of those cubes, it understands how bright that area needs to be, how dark that area needs to be. And it can actually uh, adjust the picture before we then show it on uh, to the hardware. And the hardware will do that final calibration of the image. Um, so this is featured in all of our TVs this year, our S8 and above. Um, so this is gonna give you a really good enhancement even then when we don't have all of the backlights available on the TV, for example. So this is a really good way uh, for us to get a high quality image um, on all of our TVs, which is super, super important. Cool, depth enhancer. This is another trick that we can do with software um, that allows us to enhance the picture. So uh, basically on a high sense TV, what we can do, let me see if I can get my little pointer. This is very exciting. Oh, oh there we go. So I can see a foreground image, which is this plane, uh, which looks like it's just about to miss me, which is good. Uh, so that foreground image will be identified um, by the TV. It will also look for anything that's in the mid grounds um, happening behind me, and then it'll identify what's happening right at the background. And it will do contrast tricks to make the thing that's right at the front in the foreground appear more prominent, um, and the thing in the background appear further away. So it basically gives us this sort of digital uh, depth enhancement. Um, if you remember back in the day when 3D TVs were all the rage, obviously customers didn't really like the idea of putting on the glasses, but we still wanted to keep some of the benefits uh, and some of the things we learned from 3D, and that's that's what the depth enhancer does. So every single one of our TVs this year uh, will feature that uh, depth enhancer as well. Cool. Noise reduction. I only left this year. You, you guys all know that we have noise reduction on our TVs. I only left this year um, because, uh, unfortunately, live TV in Australia is not great. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched MASH on TV. I give it a bit of a roasting every time I do a training. But really, uh, this system is very important for us to make sure that you know lower quality content coming through um, is more palatable. Um, so we'll be talking about a more advanced uh, noise reduction system in our ULED TVs in just a moment. Um, but rest assured, of course, we have that feature across all of our TVs. Cool. Let's talk about the sound. Uh, I think when a customer purchases a TV, they take it home and they don't really think about the sound quite frequently. Um, we found in a bit of our customer research that 51% uh, um, of customers, their biggest complaint when they get a TV home is the sound. 
Um, it's something that they often don't think about. Now, obviously, to that end, we have a range of sound bars to really push that sound quality. Um, but we want to make sure that the TV itself, as a single package, has a really good sound quality too. Um, so what we've done um, with the S8 um, is we've, we've brought in DTS Studio Sounds. Now, what that will do is actually create a 3D sound, sound, sound stage. It'll boost the sound um, quality and push it out wider um, than what you would get on a normal TV, which is really cool. We've also upped the quality of the internal hardware speakers on the TV as well, which is super important. Um, if you've heard DBX TV before, that's actually something that's been in our high sense TVs for a while. I thought I'd actually touch on it because we don't really talk about it enough. Um, when you're watching TV and you go to the ad break, the ads are usually quite a bit louder uh, than what you would get on normal TV. So DBX is actually a sound system that we have in our TVs, every single one of them, and that'll automatically uh, volume level. So everything is the same level, which is really important. So you go to the ad break and you're like, Jesus, what's going on? Everything works really well. Um, what you can also do is some really cool stuff. Like when we activate sports mode, part of that sports mode is actually telling DBX to enhance the sound stage and make everything sound wider. So the cheering of the crowd appears to be coming from the sides rather than the front. All of that happens from the DBX system, which is really cool. And my favorite feature, especially during the current times, um, is that you can actually enhance vocals and drop down the rest of it through the system. So basically, if I'm watching TV and someone else is trying to sleep or someone's just having a rest in the other room, um, I can actually prioritize vocals um, using the DBX system. Again, every single one of our TVs this year uh, will feature that system, which is really cool. Cool. Let's talk about design. Now, I do have one to show you. Here's one I prepared earlier, but that is the QA. So let's talk about the essay. Um, so in terms of design, um, what we've done this year, which is new, is uh, introduce the cable solution to some of the TVs. So on the back of the TV, which is the part of the TV we don't really look at, um, we thought about how we can manage those cable systems and try and have a cleaner appearance. So you can see here, um, I can run this through the conduits here. I can even run this all the way through here, for example, and then feed it through on the feed, uh, in example, which is a really cool feature. Also, uh, when we start getting to really large TVs, so as customers are looking at those 85 inches and those 100 inch TVs, um, this feature here becomes very important. And so the ability to actually take those legs and move them further in so that they can sit on an existing table um, that might have been designed for a 55 inch or a 65 inch is super critical. And um, so you'll see that mainly featured on our larger TVs to facilitate basically the customer not having to buy um, a whole new lamp suite just to put a TV in. Um, and coming back to the design itself, Really, really clean design. We've tried to keep this as bezel as possible, unibody design where possible. Um, we've basically got um, one bit of metal just folding back like that, and the screen just sits right on the front. So super, super clean. Cool. Okay. So let's move on to ULED. Now, going from the S8 to ULED is a significant jump. Now, everyone that spoke to me at CES, um, we talked about this in person, but I wanted to reiterate this. This year, we've really upped the game with ULED. Um, there's some key criteria that need to happen um, for a TV to be a ULED TV. And we think that the messaging that we're presenting to the customer is going to be a lot clearer than ever before. Um, so you got to learn your ABCDs. Now, obviously, it's ABCDs. It's ULED. You can't, you can't fit it in ABC. It's, it's too good. The good thing is you're on mute, so you can't even protest this. So good. Now. A, B, C, D, so authentic color, uh, brilliant contrast, clear motion, and distinct detail. Now, the distinct detail will actually become very important as we start moving to even higher resolutions with Australia's current internet situation. Um, so we'll talk about some of those processes there. But uh, all of these things are super important. So to put this in real terms, uh, what it takes to be a ULED TV, you have to, we're talking about the Q8, of course, you have to be quantum dot has to be a quantum dot TV. So if you want to be ULED, you have to have quantum dot. Now, obviously, you guys have probably heard of quantum dot a bit, but just in case you haven't, this is how it looks in real terms. It's nice to see it on a graph and actually see what it does. So every TV starts with a blue backlight. Now, we take that blue backlight and we put phosphors over it, we put filters over it, and on a conventional TV, this is the result that we get. Um, the blue is fantastic, and the rest of the picture is kind of a bit murky. Now, the example that I've used to explain it um, and take it with a bit of the tech away is imagine if I'm trying to paint onto a canvas. So let's say, for example, I want to paint the color red onto a canvas. Now, if I start with a canvas that's yellow, for example, and I try and paint red on it, it's not going to come out perfectly, is it? Whereas if I start with a pure white canvas and I paint red on it, it's going to become perfect. The whole point of the quantum dot system is it's actually trying to create a white backlight. It's not trying to create individual colors. So you have a blue, a green, and a red that are quite individual. 
their goal is to create the color white. And then from that, we can paint all the other colors that exist in the universe. That's basically how we start. The better we start with the white, the better we'll be able to get those colors out. And quantum dot has been proven uh, to be really the best method uh, in getting color accuracy out to a customer. So that's pillar one. Are we a ULED yet? No, there's more. <laughs> so what we've also done for those MASH lovers is sometimes you've, we've got this beautiful quantum dot TV, but you're watching live TV and it's not in 10 bit and it's not in HDR and it doesn't have all this high end quality. So does that mean that you lose out? Um, previously, you didn't really get that full picture. Um, so now we have uh, in our new high view chip, uh, the ultra color enhancer. So what this will do is actually look at the image um, that you can see, you can see over here, and it'll actually tease out extra colors that it can use um, to fill out that gradient. So a really good example of that is if you see a shot of um, the sky, for example, you might see what's called color banding, where you see a bit of blue here, a bit of a darker blue here, and it's really obvious. Um, so what we do here is actually we can identify the differences between the colors and we can smooth it all out. So that's a really, really good feature um, for our customers uh, that are watching lower end content um, to bring extra colors to the TV. You paid for the TV, you might as well get access to everything that it can do. Cool. Now here's pillar number two, full array dimming. So to be a ULED TV has to be full array. So we're talking direct lighting coming out uh, at multiple arrayed zones coming out to the TV. Um, super, super critical. I've got um, a 75 inch array upstairs and I've got this 65 inch Q8 downstairs. And honestly, it's nice and day um, when you have this full array dimming. It is so obvious. Uh, the black levels on this are absolutely phenomenal. Um, so full array local dimming pro, that's on the TV. Just to quickly explain what that is. So previously, edge of the TV, we're lighting from the bottom. We've got about 16 zones that we can work with. We can light each of those in basically a beam individually as we need to. But with full array local dimming, we have hundreds of zones um, sitting in the background um, that are firing directly at the TV. So we can actually say this quadrant of the screen, I want it to be brighter, I want to be darker. Um, and that, that's a super massive jump. That's a very premium feature um, for us to be featuring um, in all of our ULED TVs this year, which is really, really cool. So I'm quite excited that that's there, especially since you know I've got the only sample at the moment behind me. <laughs> cool. The other thing that we can talk about is the brightness. Um, so uh, a thousand nit peak brightness. Previously, we've only really uh, talked about the brightness on the top end models. So it's really nice for us to be able to get that number out to you um, for all of our ULED TVs. Um, so it's not just that it's bright. Obviously, something being bright is only good when it's bright in a positive way. For example, I can come over to your house, smash my car into your garage, turn my high beams on, and that's about 700 nits of brightness, but it's not going to be pleasant. Um, it's just going to be bright light in your face. So what we have is an algorithm here that basically works out where the brightness needs to be. Um, I know, I'm, I'm being silly. I've been in my house for three weeks, guys. <laughs> All right, so we have a peak brightness system. What it will actually do is go, okay, cool. This area of the screen needs to be really, really dark. So I can actually pull down that area of the screen and I'll make that really, really dark. And then the energy that I save from that, I can actually put into boosting up the brightness. So you'll remember, we've had many TVs now that have actually sat right at the top of the energy efficiency scale. And the big reason for that is actually this feature. Uh, so being able to actually turn off parts of the screen, reserve that energy that we're not using and then feed it into the area where it needs to be bright. That's a really, really cool feature. Um, so that's that's something that um, I'm quite excited to be able to talk about properly um, for all of the ULED range. Cool. Uh, again, that ultra dimming is there. Just wanted to put that slide up just to mention that it's there. So that's the software um, algorithm. So even though we have hundreds of zones to work with, we can still cut that down into thousands of zones, and then we can actually do a software layer on top of that again. Okay, high view engine. So. This is the brain that runs everything. What does it run? Great question, Andre. Uh, it actually does all of these. Um, so basically, this chipset, which we introduced into our TV uh, since 2012, actually runs pretty much everything. So any HDR enhancements, contrast enhancements, detail enhancements, um, the motion system, the MEMC motion system, um, and that ultra color system that we were just talking about, where it brings in extra colors, all of that is controlled by the high view chipset. 100% designed and made by Hisense. Um, we're super, super proud to have that. So that's that's featuring in all of our ULED TVs. So that's one of the step ups that you'll get as you move to a ULED. Um, obviously the motion will be improved as well. Um, so this is a basic uh, system of how motion works. Obviously as is 100 uh, native first and 200 motion, uh, not 120. That's uh, the US NTSC number. But basically 
uh, we can look at the scene, we can estimate what the next scene is going to look like, we can do black frame insertion, we can do all of the tricks uh, that you'd be used to in premium TVs uh, to get that extra motion. And that, that is all controlled by the, the high view system. Cool. Now, the next pillar, Dolby Vision HDR. Now, I will obviously go back and reiterate all these fillers to make it easy for you at the end, but Dolby Vision HDR and Dolby Atmos, super, super important for us. You know, this is, uh, to the best that we can understand, the best HDR solution in the market right now and the most widely adopted. If you're jumping on Netflix, essentially all the content on there is um, now being produced in Dolby Vision. Um, Disney has now picked up Dolby Vision. There is a, there's a whole bunch of massive movie studios um, that are working with Dolby Vision. And the basic principle of Dolby Vision is it can handle up to 4,000 nits brightness. It can handle up to 12-bit color. Um, and the, the difference between Dolby Vision and a standard HDR is that it can do this scene by scene. Um, so, for example, if there's a scene where it needs to be really dark and then the very next scene is super bright, Dolby Vision can do that, whereas standard, standard HDR can't do that. Standard HDR is set for the entire movie, and that's it. So you need to sort of kind of take down the brightness a bit, bring up the darkness a bit. So this is a really, really super, super high-end feature. Um, and, yeah, when you're watching a show with it on, you can bloody tell that it's there. It's a very cool feature. Okay. Here's some examples. I know you're looking at it on your screen, so you probably can't actually see what's happening on the screen. Um, but yes, this is a general example of what it does to the picture. So it's really retaining the colors and the highlights in, in an accurate form whilst being bringing out the brightness rather than washing things out to try to make them bright. Cool. Now we talked about sound on the S8, so let's talk about sound on the Q8. Um, so Dolby Atmos, as I mentioned, um, if you haven't heard Dolby Atmos before, you should probably do something about that. Um, Dolby Atmos is phenomenal. Um, one thing that is often not known about Dolby Atmos is uh, you can actually do it with two speakers. So uh, there's a common misconception where you need a massive array of speakers to do Dolby Atmos. And initially when it was launched, that was true. Um, but with the uh, rise of video games using just headphones and actually supporting at Dolby Atmos, they've now been able to bring that to the TV. So our TVs last year in the high end and this year in all ULEDs um, will have this feature. So even though there's only X amount of speakers in that guy there, it actually will do Dolby Atmos, not just encode it, decode it, it'll actually render it and play it out to you. Um, so because of that, especially when you get your review units, there is actually a little toggle there when you're watching Dolby Atmos content where you can turn Dolby Atmos on and off. And honestly, I think that that's there just for me and you, just so you can hear the difference. Customer would never turn that off, but honestly, turn it off, turn it back on. It is astonishing what you can do with just a few speakers. So yeah, massive feature. Really, really um, proud to have that in our TVs as well. Um, now, obviously you can have Dolby Atmos, but if the speakers aren't very good, then it's not gonna be very good. So let's talk about the sound. So many of our TVs uh, this year have a JBL sound solution built in. Uh, so the TV right behind me is a JBL sound system. Uh, one thing that's also really important is uh, many of our TVs this year are front firing speakers. Um, so, you know, depending where you position uh, the TV is going to affect the sound. So for example, if I've got a TV that's down firing and I put it on the table um, that absorbs a lot of the sound, I'm not gonna really get the same sound profile that I would expect. Um, whereas with the front firing speaker, it's actually creating the sound stage in the middle of the TV, which is where you want it to be. So the action sounds like it's coming from exactly what you're seeing. Um, and it's not going to be affected by how you position the TV, whether you put it on the wall, whether you put it on a table, it actually doesn't matter. Um, the sound quality is going to be superior. Uh, so that's something that we're including in as many TVs as possible, um, depending on the size. Uh, so we'll, we'll announce those individually. Um, but the 65Q8 that we're looking at here is JBL front firing sound system. Cool. So I'm going to riskily <laughs> attempt to uh, move from this screen to another screen in just a moment, but I wanted to talk about two quick features um, before we get there. I'm actually just going to skip the slides though. We don't need the slides for them. Um, so basically, uh, we've got game mode and we've got sports mode. Um, these features, uh, I think, are becoming more understood by customers now. If you're buying a game console, um, you're definitely going to be using game mode. It is really night and day as to whether you're using that or not. Um, so all of our TVs this year are going to feature the S8, um, will feature the game mode and uh, sports mode, as well as the Q8, uh, super important. Um, that's from the 50 inch and above on the S8, and that's every single model on the Q8. Um, so basically all that does is allow the game console to run everything to the system and skip all of the processing. So the input lag is super, super low um, and the motion response is much higher. Um, sports mode, um, again, it's all about motion. 
Um, but it's not just about picture. So as I mentioned before, sports mode will actually adjust the sound and the picture and the motion. Um, so it does it all together to give you that sort of stadium experience. Cool. Uh, we've, we've talked about those before, but I want to show you something new. Um, so let's do this as he tentatively tries to switch screens. There we go. Okay, cool. I'm going to bring my mic with me, come on a little journey, and we're going to have a look at the TV here. So I wanted to show you um, VDU4, or Vita4, I should say. So Vita4 um, is actually a complete rework of our operating system. Um, so what we've done is really look at how customers have been using our TVs and how they want to get to content quicker. So as you can see here, the Netflix integration that you're used to is still there. Um, but what we've done is try to integrate as many apps as possible straight onto the home screen. So as I move across to uh, YouTube, for example, um, obviously it's uh, <laughs> very aware of the current times, um, the content is going to pop up. One thing that I'm really proud of is even with STEM, which is a local Australian app, we've got full integration as well. So this is the TV without anything logged in. But once I log into my accounts, I'm actually going to start seeing uh, my content and being able to continue watching um, just as I would be able to do when I go into the app itself. So all the apps in the top row here uh, will eventually have the ability to integrate. This is a, a sample. Uh, we've also got a brand new app here uh, called Tubi. Um, so that is thousands of hours of free content. So we kind of wanted to make sure that when a customer buys a Hisense TV and they get it home, uh, they don't just have to watch live TV to get free content. Um, we've got Freeview Plus, we've got a few catch-up apps on there, and we've got Tubi here now, which has all this free content that you can jump into. Um, further to that, rather not just taking one app that we can put on our platform, but actually making our own platform, we're now introducing something called Vita Free. So Vita Free essentially uh, is a, I can't open it unfortunately because the, the sample version is not finished, um, but basically this is a collection of free content. Um, so it's content uh, being curated and pulled in from multiple sources for free, um, exclusive to Hisense customers. So I'm really quite happy with this. Not only do we have a massive app with free content, but we have our own app uh, where we can get extra content um, for free as well, which is very cool. Cool. So let me show you another uh, new section here. So we've got uh, Vita Art um, in collaboration with Deviant Art. So basically, this allows us to have images on the screen uh, when we're not using the TV. So for example, I can go into a category like scenery. I can jump in there um, and it's going to give me a uh, basically a carousel of images. So when I click on one of these images, you might not be able to see on the screen because obviously you're watching a picture um, of a picture. <laughs> so what you're seeing here is not representative of the quality of the TV at all. It's representative of my internet connection and the quality of my camera. But um, what's happening here is my brightness has actually dropped down to about 5%. Um, and it's done that to make sure the TV looks more like a picture frame rather than this bright. Um, thing like coming into my house. So I can have this cycling through on images and when I'm not doing anything. Where this becomes really cool is I can actually jump into the settings here and I can actually have this happen automatically. Uh, so I can have this when I'm sitting on Netflix and I haven't chosen anything for a while or I'm sitting on an empty input or I finished a game on PlayStation and I'm just sitting there in the menu. Um, after five minutes, it'll actually jump uh, into the last uh, group that I was looking at and it'll cycle through. Um, all those images for me and drop the backlight as well. So it'll actually put my TV into a, a better power saving mode uh, and have a nice uh, collection of images on the screen as well, which is really cool. Um, where I think this becomes really cool is you can actually uh, create your own accounts and then jump in and have um, images of the holiday, images of um, you know your family all together there and have that cycling. So it becomes a, like a massive um, digital photo frame uh, when you're not using the TV. So yeah, we're talking like 80,000 images, you know, some of our competitors that have done a, a similar feature, they might be sitting at around about 100 curated images. So there's, there's, there's quite a lot of choice uh, for the customer there, which we're, we're quite happy with. Uh, one last thing I'd like to quickly show you, um, just as we navigate through the menu, I'll show you the settings section. So very similar to what we've had before um, in Vita 3. Um, we've added a few extra things. So of course, you're going to have a full Alexa built-in support. Uh, the Q8 will come with a Bluetooth uh, voice remote as well that I can talk directly into and control all of the Alexa functions. Uh, you'll be able to use a um, Google Home uh, compatible system to send voice commands to the TV uh, as well, which is really cool. So we've got support for both of those systems. Um, we've also added a few little fun features as well. So for example, um, I can jump into Bluetooth 
and I can actually turn this TV into um, a full Bluetooth speaker, which is really cool. Um, so uh, that'll actually allow me to use the, the JBL firing sound system that I've got, which is a very high quality sound system. But where this goes a bit further is if I've got a high sense soundbar plugged in, for example, or if I've got a massive component system that doesn't have Bluetooth because it's a bit older, I can actually then use this TV to send the sound um, out to those massive sound systems and I can have a house party, I can listen to Spotify, whatever I'm doing, um, but I can use the TV to actually receive that audio, which is pretty cool. So it means you don't have to change any of your TV settings if your audio is already set up, just send it on to Bluetooth and everything will work out the same way that it did before. So I think it's quite a cool feature. Cool. Let me stop that. Whoop. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to put my mic back down, switch back to my normal stream. Hi there. Du -du -du -du. Let's go back over here. Okay, so let's put this all into context and have a look at the full range. Okay. Oh, actually, before we do that, I keep forgetting about this feature because it's so new. All right, so um, we actually now have an anti-glare screen. So all of our TVs have actually always had uh, an anti-reflective coating um, because when it comes to Australian uh, households, we have the most amount of sunlight. Uh, during the day uh, out of any country in the world. So we've always put an anti-reflective coating on all of our screens to make sure that we can watch them properly in, in a bright household. Uh, but we're taking this a bit further on some of the Q8 models. Uh, we'll be revealing which models have this feature as they start hitting market. But basically the one behind me actually does have the feature. Now, I have to mention that this is designed for human eyes. So my camera was actually picking up a bit of glare, but when I turn around and look at the TV, there's nothing there, which is pretty crazy. Um, so if you've ever seen our laser TV before, it works in a similar fashion to that. Um, so our laser TV, if you look at that wall that we have, that, that massive screen that we have, what it does is absorb the light, not coming from the direction um, that you want it to come in and reflect that off away from the viewer. Um, so in doing that, we can actually reduce about 66.7, but who's counting, um, percent of the glare, which is pretty cool, and actually block um, absorb 98.5% of that sunlight that's coming into the screen. So this is super important for houses that have, you know, that massive open area with a lot of light coming in, and we can reduce that glare as well. So I'm quite happy that that feature's there. Cool. Um, we'll talk about the design super quickly. Um, so floating glass display. Obviously, I want you guys to actually, like, stand in front of these TVs and actually have a really good look at them, but this is the best we can do right now. So floating glass display, we actually have the screen panel um, sitting just in front of the bezel. So when you're standing there and you're looking at it, it kind of looks like the screen is floating um, on the edge of the, the, the bezel, which is kind of why we call it a floating glass display. Um, so it really gives that minimized view where you can't really see much of the screen. All you're seeing is this massive picture, which is kind of what you want. You buy the TV to look at the picture, you buy the TV not to look at the TV. Cool. Um, again, very weak feet position for our larger TVs. Obviously, this is going up to um, some pretty big sizes as well. Um, and we've got a cable solution there as well um, that'll allow you to feed those cables back. Okay, so let's go through the range. Now, I'm going to be a bit cheeky. I'm only showing you what we're showing you today. So this is the full range, um, but let's talk about the Series 8 and let's talk about the Q8. Uh, now, all these models here will be coming to market later this year, and we're, we're excited to announce um, dates, and we'll get in front of all of you again, and, we'll, and hopefully we can do it in person and, and, and show you the products and talk about them. Um, but for now, let's talk about the products that we're actually bringing right now. Um, so Series 8, uh, 100 smooth motion. Uh, when you get up to the 200 inch, it actually uh, is a bit of a different beast, as of the 100 inch, so it's a bit of a different beast. Um, so it actually goes to 200 smooth motion. Um, it actually goes to Dolby Vision. Uh, and Dolby Atmos as well. Um, so when you go to the 100 inch, the quality actually steps up um, quite a bit um, from the other sizes, which is really cool. So that's HDR10. Uh, that is a all the all the features that we talked about. Um, it does support Bluetooth straight from the get go. Uh, so that's something that we've added. Um, and the voice control function is there as well um, on the system straight away, which is really important. Um, then again, moving to the Q8, I just really want to talk about the massive difference in quality. Um, so going from a, a Series 8 to a Q8, you're doubling the motion rate. You're going from precision color straight to quantum dot. You're going from a standard backlight system straight to full array local dimming. Um, you're getting Dolby Vision. You're getting Dolby Atmos. Um, you're getting uh, a Bluetooth remote. You're getting that voice control built in. You're getting basically every single feature that we usually had in our absolute top end ULEDs is coming straight down um, to the first ULED that we're bringing to the market this year, which is really exciting. Um, so 
Not the best TV we're making. We've still got a dual cell, which I'm very excited about. But this is a super, super high-end TV um, at the level that we've never really had uh, at this sort of price point. So we're very, very excited about that. Cool. Well, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go through. Um, thank you for having a listen to me. I'm going to, whilst I change things around, I'm going to get the chat up and have a look at if there's any questions that come through. Um, so bear with me. And if you do have any further questions, please answer those into the chat um, as well. All right, well, well done, Chris. Um, I am um, <laughs> the. Uh, I'll actually probably have a. I think the first question that was in there, apart from the uh, the comment on social distancing from uh, from Trevor and Stephen, I'll take that as a comment. Thanks, uh, thanks, Chris. The um, the Jason actually had mentioned uh, a question around getting the getting the uh, the hundred inch through regular door. It's a really good question. And in fact, it probably validates our uh, our augmented reality app that we developed last year. So um, this is an app that's available now. I think, as I mentioned earlier, it's uh, it's called Hisense Home AR app, and it actually has been a, a great facilitator for the launch of our laser TV product at also 100 inch. So clearly, as a pre-purchase uh, consideration for consumers, not only can they look at them to ensure that it actually fits their space. But clearly, uh, ensure that we can actually um, col I guess collaborate a little bit better in getting that product not only in the right position in their home, but actually through the through the doors of their home and in their in their in their living space. Um, beyond that, we've been clearly just having some de quite detailed discussions with our retail channel partners to ensure that uh, installation is part of the package as well. So I think that's uh, that's something that we're quite proud of. Uh, cool, I can see a few other questions there. I might uh, jump in and answer a few of those. Uh, I think Stephen Dotson had a question on um, how many zones in full array local bidding pro. Chris, I'll hand that over to you. <laughs> yes, thanks for the handball. Um, so uh, basically, we're not we're not disclosing the amount of zones at the moment. What I can tell you is uh, it's they're all above 100 zones. We're not, not trying to be sketchy. It's just that um, every single size actually has a different amount of zones. So if you remember back when we launched the 9 series um, TV, the P9 series, um, that actually had a different amount of zones for the 65 inch and a different amount of zones for the 75 inch. And basically, it's what um, our engineers worked out to be the optimal amount of zones for that size ratio. Um, but basically, full array dimming pro is our premium. That's the best uh, that we do in terms of dimming zones, apart from, of course, the dual cell. Um, so if I do get uh, individual zone numbers, I can get that out to you. But at the moment, I don't have that. I just know they're all above 100 zones. hope that answered the question. Um, Peter Wells also says, nice hoverboard. Well, thank you. I actually made that myself. <laughs> Um, does that work with Google Photos? No. So this is, is it exclusively to um, when we're talking about the uh, Beta Art app. I assume that's what the question is about. Um, that is exclusively with DeviantArt. Um, so basically, you, you need to create a DeviantArt account. You can bring in specific photos there. I actually kind of prefer that rather than just dumping my entire Google Photos in because I'm sure there's a lot of photos that um, just weren't taking very well or, you know, 15 photos of the same setting while I'm trying to get things ready. It's kind of nice to be able to curate your own photos and set up a bit of a uh, a nice account of what you want to show to people. So that's kind of, that's the way I would look at it. Um, does Bluetooth sound work with the screen off? Yes, yes it does. Um, so once you set it up and you connect it, you can actually then hit one button which will turn the screen off. Obviously that drops the energy rating right down and it'll just keep pumping out uh, to your sound systems until you hit a button on the remote um, and then you can go back to standard TV mode. Uh, many of us record the screen. Let me just read these questions again. Many of us record videos of the screen, so I wonder about its visibility. Probably like getting clear phones, cameras. Um, so, if you actually remember seeing the dual cell TV, for those that were there, were there at um, CES, that actually had the anti glare coding. Um, so, when you're recording the screen, um, generally it's going to be quite good. I've got some stage lighting in here. I do Twitch streaming as well, so I've got weird lighting coming on, which is uh, kind of exacerbating it because I'm pointing the lights directly at the TV. Um, so in a normal recording process, generally speaking, um, you shouldn't get that reflection coming back. And um, also this is a pre-production sample, so I actually don't know whether it has the full coding that we saw on the dual cell. It definitely seems different um, to me on this particular um, hand-built sample. Um, is anti-glare only available on the LED? Uh, yes, so it's, it's a premium feature. Uh, we want it to really be um, there on those premium TVs. Uh, so you'll basically see it from the, the Q8 and above is where that feature is going to start falling in um, to, the, to the models. Cool. Um, <laughs> what's your Twitch ID? It's, 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 it's better if you don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, cool. So from, uh, from Fergus, I think on the on different, I guess, new apps, so specifically Disney Plus, Apple TV. So Fergus, I guess, and, and for everyone, clearly it's a, it's, a, it's a reoccurring question on on the availability of new apps. Um, so Python is clearly committed to growing its range of available apps, and like many manufacturers, is uh, exploring the addition of not only Disney, Apple. So we're in conversations with everyone, uh, and that's actually been the case for quite a long time. In fact, we've been in discussions with. Uh, with uh, specifically Disney uh, Disney Plus for over a year, um, so in uh, in certain aspects, we've uh, that that conversation has been ongoing for quite some time. So we look forward to sharing more information once that's available. Uh, in the meantime, it is possible to use uh, let it be Disney Plus specifically on your Hisense TV uh, by connecting to a third party device or basically also using it by uh, our our Android TV. Um, actually, if you remember the remote, um, so the question was, can we get a look at the remote? I actually don't have it with me. I've got, I've got my remote because the sample wasn't shipped with the remote. Boo! Um, but uh, the, the there is a new remote. Um, yes, there is, um, and we'll show you once we get some photos of it. Um, but there is also, if you remember, on the eight series remote, um, there was that unibody sort of metal uh, remote, really, really premium looking. That's what's going to be shipping uh, with the Q8 as well. You actually get two remotes. Um, uh, so you'll get a remote similar to this, a little bit different, similar to this, and you'll also get that uh, unibody Bluetooth voice remote um, that with that cut, basically cut out of metal as well. Um, yeah, uh, we can get a photo to you um, of what that looks like. Cool. All right. Well, I guess if we've got, uh, have we got any further questions, Chris? Um, there was a question around um, 100 inch um, being on the S8 um, and why we wouldn't do that on the Q8. Yeah. Also. Yep. yep, no, good question. I'll take that. Yep. Um, so um, one of the reasons for us is clearly we wanted to have a very large range of, and one of the things that we pride ourselves as a brand is actually making products accessible. So clearly the range and uh, so the, the growth of large screen uh, is not only accessible in premium, call it, higher, more aspirational product, but for us, we actually wanted to make it available for everyone. Hence why we're actually uh, bringing in the 100 inch uh, product and that in the uh, in the S8 uh, series. Clearly, we are never uh, riding off the availability of having larger sizes than other mm -hmm. series as well. But uh, for the time being this year, we're launching uh, the largest size in the Q8 will be 85 inch. And again, everything's always under review. We're always very, very open to consumer feedback. And if clearly if there's consumer dem demand across different technologies, different uh, devices, sizes, tech, et cetera, we're always uh, uh, ensuring that we're, we're in tune with consumer demand. All right, cool. Well, unless there's uh, any further questions, we'll. Uh, and again, I, I would like to reiterate that if you uh, if you have any further questions, please reach out to us through Deck PR, through Chris, everybody. Uh, hopefully, we, we've got everybody's details. Um, but that does bring us to the end of the session. Uh, again, thanks for uh, thank you so much, guys, everyone for uh, uh, for attending. It's uh, really it really is great to see you all. And um, as Chris mentioned. Uh, I'm happy again to connect with you separate related chats uh, further if there's uh, if there's any interest. Oh, there's a question, Val, for the 100 inch S8. I, I believe the pricing is actually in the media release. Good question, Val, um, on the pricing for the 100 inch. It is uh, in the media release. I believe that should be probably already in your inbox. Sounds cool. All right, fantastic. Well, again, thank you, everyone. And uh, enjoy the rest of the week. Stay safe, and I hope everyone is uh, is observing all the uh, all the uh, social distancing regulations as Trevin uh, and Stephen <laughs> and everyone. <laughs>